Hi, Erin with AVs here. I have some great tips for you today using our epoxy paste. I get a lot of questions about this product all the time and I feel like it's probably overdue to put a video out there on how we heat it, how we add pigments to it, what types of pigments to use and or why we don't use certain pigments and also how to apply it in different ways. So I'm gonna start a little series of videos here. Maybe we'll run them all together. We'll see what kind of happens. I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, I do not have my camera clicker today that turns it on and off. So you are subjected to my arm going like this. It just is what it is. I have the story that my child lost my clicker. I'm totally sticking to that story, just saying. So today this is how we are going to work. And let's get started. So first you want to read the directions is always a good thing. And so in this case, it says on here, if paste is firm or to make thinner, gently heat part A in hot, not boiling water for 10 minutes. Uh, caution, it will be hot and sticky. Allow the product to cool before mixing with part B. Heat accelerates working time. Heat accelerates your working time. So why would you not wanna heat the product? Because it accelerates your working time. Your working time is, it says one to three hours. It's probably gonna be closer to three hours almost every time with no heat. So how do I get it to set up quicker? I don't have three or four hours. I said four hours, cause sometimes it's been four hours. Depends on how vigorously I mix the product. Um, so I like to work with it in 20, 30, 40 minute intervals. So my trick for you is not using the boiling water. It takes 10 minutes. Who's got an extra 10 minutes? I sure don't. So I take the cap off. Okay, and before I do this, please, please use Caution and common sense, because what I'm about to show you is why we are in my kitchen. So we're gonna take the part A, we took the cap off of it, we're gonna put it in the microwave. Whole thing, just like that. We can do this many times, as many as you like, for future uses. But just one time for this use. So we're going to put, um, I don't know, I'm gonna do 18 seconds. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very sticky. And that is not a good combination on your skin, my friends. I have lots of personal conviction with this. Um, it hurts, don't do it. Hot, sticky, also makes it a little more fluid, which is why we say you can gently heat it if you want it thinner. So how thin does this get? It's pretty thin right now. Um, there you go. So now we're gonna mix it with the part B. Very sticky, I like to scrape the lids on the sides. Very sticky. And my containers. I just use a cup. Plastic cups work great. Craft sticks work excellent. I like to double them up and mix with two sticks because it's stronger that way. So I'm going to tip the camera down. I'm sorry you have to see my arm again, but I'm going to show you how we mix this. And then I'm going to show you additives that you can add to it. So bear with me here. I think that's probably good. Now, um, I didn't mention this, but you definitely want to glove up before you start working with this sticky mess. And yes, these are my favorite blue gloves that you've seen in all the other videos. And this is my favorite Avis Clay Mac because it catches all the stuff. It's so great to work on. And you know, that's another video another time. So anyhow, um, so you're gonna measure equal parts of A and B. I usually start with the B and it's usually pre-measured beforehand. Because I'm doing a lot of little different additives and I want you to get a good feel for it. I'm gonna kind of put a lot in here. So here's how I measure. Okay, so it's about like that. I'm just eyeballing this as you're going to notice. And here's my other stick in my part A. Here it comes. That looks about, about right. The containers look about equal on the inside and the level line looks about the same. So I'm gonna put these two sticks together and I'm going to mix it. Now, with this type of paste epoxy product, we are going to scrape the sides often and we're going to mix it vigorously. Not slow, not like, you know, you got all day doing this. 
I mean, you're gonna wanna whip this stuff in your hand because that is what activates these two components and will get them to set. The more you um, mix it vigorously, the shorter your working time is. However, it is very important to note that parts A and B must be mixed thoroughly. No color streaking should exist when you are done with it because you want the product to set up um, for however, you know, whatever your time frame is. Um, so I heated this up for 18 seconds. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna cut me down to about 30 minutes of working time. And by 30 minutes, we probably won't be able to pull this out of here. I'm not gonna hopefully not have this video go that long. But um, mixing uh, for two minutes vigorously, I did heat it, but if you weren't to heat it, you would feel a little heat on the outside of this container, even through your gloved hands. And that is your activation signal that it is ready to go. And so also with the heating, you probably don't have to mix it just quite as long. So you just wanna make sure that it's thoroughly combined. Um, okay, so there we go. So you, those are your basics, your A and your B, you get those out of the way. Now we're going to start with different types of additives. So I'm gonna put a bunch of different little cups out here and kind of go through them one by one. And I'll just divvy some paste out in each of these. So this is one kind of sort of method of application is using a craft stick and kind of doing what I'm doing right here with it. Um, I'm gonna go through another set once I get these all mixed up. You can spread this on a craft stick. You can spread it with any kind of tool, but as you can see, it is sticky. last one I think we'll just leave the rest of this in the cup and work from there yes very very sticky okay so what kind of additives can we use well we can use powder this is a pearlex or a luma dust it's basically a mica powder um, and we can put that in there I'm uh, this is a luma lights ocean blue dye we could use a, a liquid dye we could use an oil paint, an oil-based paint, and we could use um, an acrylic paint. I don't recommend using acrylic paint, and I'm going to show you why. Um, and you know, there's always you know all sorts of different kinds of powder pigments and stuff. Um, add whatever you like to it. Um, but this is just a quick little blurb on how to how to do this. So this is just a black pearl. And so how much do I add? Well, you don't need a whole heck of a lot. That's not a ton in there. I always have craft sticks on hand here and you just mix it. So my A and B is already mixed. And as you can see, it didn't take very much of that powder and it gave it a really nice, you don't have to continue mixing it. Really nice color. Okay, so that is your mica powders. Next, we're going to put this ocean blue dye in it. And take the next container. This is, I mean, a good reference on how much we actually, okay, this one's maybe not open. All right, we're not gonna use that color, I lied. We're gonna use a, a green if it's open. It's open, so this is gonna be green. Talk about a malfunction. All right, try this one more time. <laughs> Will this work? Ocean blue. Ocean blue. This is not working. Guys, the struggle here, it's real. Where are my tools? Here's my tool. Okay, there we go. All right, back to the ocean blue. Ocean blue dye. That is probably way too much. Popsicle stick. Ocean blue. Okay, 
Then we will use the, what else do I have here? We're gonna use oil paint. I get this one particularly a lot. Okay, so oil paints, I tell people little bit the pin swipes of color. And so what do I mean by pin swipes? This little bit of paste, it's probably close to two tablespoons in here. I'm going to take this little bit, and this is what I need my pin swipes across the top. That's it, that's not very much. You don't really want more than that for the oil paint in this amount of mixture, and it's gonna color this really, really effectively. And the color is gonna be nice and rich. You don't wanna overdo it. Um, it would be really goopy, I would think, if you overdid it, but that is just a burnt sienna. Yeah, I used a metal tool, and you can do that too. Um, just keep a bottle of safety solvent nearby to clean up your tools. And I will actually grab a paper towel and do that super quick for you. Okay, so let's get this off really quickly. It's kind of like magic. It does not come off that easy and quickly with just water. Just thought I would mention that. Um, okay, and now the last one that we're going to do here, and this is why I tell people don't use acrylic paint. And you are about to see why. So we're gonna use three times as much as we did for the oil paint because it really takes that much to do this. And you will notice, look at the consistency of this. It makes it kind of like a chewing gum. It is not fluid. The color is not as rich. And as you work with it, you can do this. I mean, it does work. It just isn't very nice to work with, I don't think which is why we're showing you not to do this. And this is the same effect you will get if you mixed it with, say, epoxy sculpt. So you see how this one's really goopy and not real tameable? It, it literally, it's like you chewed up a water bubble gum and spit it in there. And this one with the dye, is much nicer. And your powder pigments. You also notice maybe that these are setting up a little bit um, more than the first batch. Something else that I like to add to my mixture is baking soda. And why would I add baking soda? Well, um, I like that it gives it a little more tooth. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one with the mica powder and I'm gonna just pull, tap just a little bit, not a lot. This gives it a little more tooth. So just a little sprinkle, that's all you need. It stiffens it up a little bit. Um, small amounts are not going to affect the setup or the hardness. A lot of it will, um, but that would be with any type of additive. So I don't know that you can actually see much of a difference, but what we're going to do with it, you will notice a little bit of a difference. So there's your additives, there's your um, dyes and your paints and I mean, get creative with it. You could even add some sand or, you know, if you're making a big base or something for it, some type of other grit. Um, all of that is really helpful. So, um, some of the types of applications for this. So you could put, we're just gonna take um, this one with the paint in it. You can apply it like this with, and spread it, trowel it, however you wanna do that and it stays pretty much on top of foam or whatever you put it in. Now, if you were going to go and put this in a mold, um, it's up to you if you wanna use a release agent. If the mold is flexible and made of silicone, you really don't. But this is not the best way to get this in here. Um, it's kind of messy. So I'm gonna show you another trick. Uh, it's not really pourable once you heat it so if you wanna pour it, then just skip the first part of the video and don't heat the product, but it will take longer for it to set up. So this is kinda, it really doesn't work like this, and that's why I'm showing you what to use it, how to use it, and whatnot. Um, so my favorite way to get it in a mold like this is going to be to just grab a bag and a pair of scissors and um, I 
open the bag up. And I turn the bag inside out and I grab my paste. And I put my gob of it right in the corner. Probably have some more, but that's that's okay. And then I'm gonna flip it around. It's like frosting now. And so you've made a pipeable little bag and you want your little air bubble at the tip and you're gonna cut the tip however big or small you want. Now, if you have a small place you want it, you don't wanna cut the tip super big because that's how it's gonna come out. And so now it's like frosting. So what can you do with this? Well, you can easily put it in a mold like this. That is way easier than trying to cram it in there like I just did. You can use it to grout tiles, which is one of my favorite uses for this exact application. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you're gonna grout tile, again, AV Safety Solvent, you cannot do this without the product. So, you cut your bag tip. This tip might be a little big. And you stick it right in between your tiles. This is way too big of a tip for this, but you can make your tip smaller. And I'm just gonna go. And it kind of made a mess, but, but what else can you do with this? When it's like this, you could draw with it. You could draw with it on a mirror, do whatever you want, see? How nice is that? You can just make a letter, just like that. Um, and then when you're done, you just toss this away. So we're just gonna go like that so we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the video here and not make a mess. And what did I do with this tile? Well, I have some paper towel here and I have some safety solvent and I'm going to wipe some of these tiles right off, just like this. see how nicely this grouts out. So yes, you can use this for tile work if you would like. Um, if the surface is flat and you can work in stages, this is a great product for it because you can make the grout any color that you want um, and you don't have to worry about sealing it afterwards. Um, but again, when you shorten your working time, you are going to find that you need to work with this in stages to do such a thing. So I'll pick that up and so you can see how nicely that grouted out right there. Um, it's kind of a bad color to use in here, but it did, it did work pretty darn well. And you can also see that it doesn't, the paste doesn't go all the way through to the other side. So this paste particularly is a little bit thicker. We do have a thinner paste. It's called fix it paste. And that will be a different video on comparing the two of them. Or maybe I'll add it to this one. Who knows? So those are just the different types of applications that you can do. You can, it doesn't eat foam, that's good to know. Um, there's no sulfur in the product, so it's good for any kind of mold that you have. Though you, if it's a plastic mold, definitely use a very good release agent, like a silicone um, release agent or something like that. I also like using the epoxy paste to coat large surfaces. Like I would really have to work epoxy sculpt our clay-like product around this, and that's cool, that's fine. But to do it with the epoxy paste is so easy. You just put your blob of it right on your tin foil or whatever you have, and you just spread it. You don't even have to be very nice about it because for the most part when you're doing that, you just want a light coated shell. And so this is where heating it really comes into, comes handy because you don't have to sit and wait hours for it to set up. You can go right over top of this as soon as this starts getting hard with epoxy sculpt or any of your other um, sculpting mediums um, from AVs. I'm just gonna use this other color that we didn't pigment here just to give you an idea of how easy this actually is. Yes, it's a mess. We know it's a mess. It's called paste. <laughs> I don't know anything called paste that is clean to use. And there is a learning curve to this, and you will find, I think, these videos helpful for that learning curve. And you'll 
think of all sorts of ideas on how to use this. You could totally pour this into a mold and just dump it in there. But this is a pretty easily done, um, a different video I did, I showed you how effective the solvent was at smoothing this out. It really, this is with the solvent. I can really rub this in here and kind of put this where I want it. This side has no solvent on it. You'll see how my finger just kind of drags on there and it's a sticky mess. So the solvent, no solvent. You want the solvent. Um, it, it, you don't mix the solvent with the product. It doesn't work like that. This is a surface technique only. Um, keep a box of gloves near you because you'll want to change your gloves frequently to keep stickiness so you don't track on things. Um, one of the other things I was going to show you quick was, you know, just dumping it in a mold and you can do that. I think I, I showed you that you could trowel with it and see, I got it all over me again, but it also works if you wanted to, you know, dump it in a mold too, especially if it's like a bigger, deeper mold than this. I know I showed you with that blue example, but this is more for the dumping purpose of it. And this stuff is good to use outdoors. It's waterproof once it's cured. Um, it also has a very slight flex to it when it's dried. Uh, so in, in a big chunk, you won't notice that. If you just you know poured it out this thick, you, you would not notice a flex to it. But if it's thin, and you can get this really really papery thin if you wanted to. Um, you know, you just spread it out on your mat just like this and you could come back to this and when it's set and peel it up off this mat and I mean this is about as thin as it gets. Um, so thick or thin doesn't make a difference. Uh, it will cure the same and um, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this now that you have a couple tricks in your arsenal to use. So this is Erin from my kitchen saying happy sculpting.